Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and I want to welcome you to my sweet treat for Acrylic April 2019. If you're watching this after 2019 April, you are still welcome to play along. Click the link down below for acrylicapril.com and you can do this 30 days, 30 small paintings, 30 amazing things that you're going to probably learn about yourself to get something done that's small in a short period of time. You don't want to spend an hour on this. You want to spend between 20 to 45 minutes. And that's what my goal is, is to try and get this done quickly. So I have created this Blackberry right here. I made a traceable that you can download from my website. You just click on the more information down below. There's a ton of information down below the video. Now, if you don't see that because you're on a phone or a tablet, next to the title, there's a little triangle. Drop that triangle down and it drops all the information. Then you'll have all the links. All those links. I have a link to acrylicapril.com. I have a link to my traceable. I have a link to a giveaway for Arteza canvas panels and paint. It is available to the United States and a limited number of European countries. And that is only because Arteza is sending the prizes directly from them and they're only shipping to places that they ship to. I figure that's fair. They're given the prizes. They can ship them where they want. I will be doing a giveaway soon that is worldwide. Anywhere that has a legal shipping address, I will ship to. But for right now, we're doing this one. I have these canvas panels that are already pre-painted. I did those in a separate video. They're up above with leftover paints from doing the Arteza color chart. This was my color chart and I did all of the paints, figured out what was going to make what colors. And I figured out that there's some really great deep purples right here. So they are made with the crimson, phthalo green, phthalo blue, and ultramarine blue. So those colors are down here. I have crimson, phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, lemon yellow, phthalo green, yellow ochre, burnt umber, and titanium white. And we're going to get started. I did do a color study on my Procreate program. That's the one that you see right here over my shoulder. And so I learned what I needed to do and I used some real blackberries to look at to give me ideas. And the tricky thing with blackberries is that you don't want it to end up looking like a bundle of grapes. That's the tricky thing with blackberries. To start off, I'm going to start blocking in some colors. Now you notice that the leaves are very light, but there are some darker tones in them. If you look at that picture right there. So I am going to go ahead and put my middle green in and the middle green is going to be a mixture. Let's see here. I have two cups of water. One cup of water is going to be for really rinsing the paint out of my brush. The other cup of water is going to be to just dampen my brush for when I am just touching into my paint. So I'm going to take some of that lemon yellow and just a touch of phthalo green. Look how fast that colors that. This is a small painting and you do not have to do huge amounts of paint. You know, I've, I'm using the cat's tongue right now and I'm just going to block in that stem. See how that is not as bright as you think it is. And the leaf. And I'm going to block in both leaves and you see, I'm not being precious, but I am kind of going towards the stem because this is allowing that background color to come through and inform my veining without having to do anything. Look at that. Now these colors do dry a little bit darker 
And if you're wondering how I got that uh, outline on here, I put just plain white chalk on the back of my traceable, put it down and just traced it. Tracing is a tool to get us to painting faster. Now you can grid this if you want to, you can just freehand it. This is not something to be uh, worrying yourself over. All right, so we've got that one blocked in. Get a little bit more color on the stem. Now we're going to go down towards the blackberry. Don't fuss about it. This is, you know, this could be considered just a small study for a bigger painting. So don't worry if it is not coming out exactly the way you intend it to. It will probably come out better if you just relax. And I'm not too worried if my stems get thick. You know, it's real interesting. If you go and look at blackberry canes and the way blackberries grow, I'm just grabbing more of the, the phthalo green and that lemon yellow. And I'm not worried about making perfect mixes. And if I start getting highlights a little earlier, that's okay too. So you see how I'm just going back to, towards the center vein of the leaf. I'm going to zoom in on that. There we go. A little bit more water, a little more paint. These Arteza paints are quite opaque when you put enough on, you know, just like any. And I'm being real loose on the edge because these leaves have a serrated edge. See that? And then I'm going to go ahead and brighten up the top edge of that stem going towards the leaf and brighten up into the leaf a little bit. Take maybe a little bit more of just the yellow with the green that's in my brush and just start brightening it up. Look at that. By putting the traceable down or having a drawing down, it gives you a little bit more freedom I know it sounds weird to say that it gives you more freedom by having a drawing, but since it's in chalk, it doesn't really, it doesn't really limit you. I'm going to put a little bit more yellow going down and across that. I need to brighten up that edge because it's against some brighter yellow. I need to brighten up the edge of that leaf a little bit. Just like that. And this top edge of that leaf right there needs to be a little bit brighter. And I'll just throw a little bit more of that in there just because I have it on my brush. A little bit more bright on this stem. Just because it's pretty. You know, you can put things in just because they're pretty. You are the ruler of your world here. And I'm not going to fuss about these leaves much more. I want them to be painterly. I want them to just sort of give you the impression of leaves. A little bit of dark in there, though. I do want some variations. All right, so this is a little bit darker up underneath of those two little branches where the leaves come out. And it sort of drifts back just a bit. And I do have some green here on the, or green, yellow, yellow ochre. 
on top of the berry. I will probably come back in and brighten that up, but I just want to make sure I remember that it's there. So just like that for now. And now I'm going to rinse out my brush and go in with the middle purple. So that is going to be, let's see. I think that's actually going to be my phthalo blue and the crimson. You, it's hard for you to see, but I will be putting a bit of white into it, just like that. This is a huge cup of coffee. Oh, if you like coffee or tea, check out my merch down below this. I have a really cute fill me up with coffee that goes on t-shirts and mugs and all kinds of things. And a fill me up with tea. The only one I haven't done yet is fill me up with cocoa. Anybody want fill me up with cocoa? Let me know in the comments below. If this is your first time here, make sure that you have clicked that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you'll be notified when new videos go up. And don't forget to click that like button and share the video with your friends. That really helps me out and it gets the word out about Acrylic April. All right, so now what we're going to do, I'm going to take a little bit of phthalo blue that's probably a lot of phthalo blue. And then some crimson. And then a little bit more phthalo blue. You see how that's making kind of this deep maroon almost. Now it's going to the purple. A little more violet. There we go. Then I'm going to take a touch of white. and some more of that paint. <laughs> there we go. Now, I am not going to worry about where my, where this was all drawn in. I'm just going to paint it in with that middle tone of purple. Remember what I said, the hardest thing about this painting is keeping the blackberry looking like blackberry and not like a bundle of grapes. That's the trickiest bit. I just, I just dipped the tip of my brush into the water so that I could get a nice fluid flowing line. Being able to do this painting on top of a background that is already dry is so helpful. All right, so we will be putting highlights and we will be putting shadows. But first, I need to dry this really quick. And to dry it, what I'm going to do is use a hairdryer. And I am just going to use the lowest setting and dry it with cool air. You want it to dry. It's the action of the air moving across that, act, that uh, sets the top surface of the paint. All right, did you see it? Did you see how the moisture went away? It went less glossy. That shows you that it's dry. See, it's, it's dry now. The surface is dry now. I want to put some of my deeper, darker tones in. I know it looks really dark already, but I'm gonna take some phthalo blue and some of the burnt umber and mix those together. And that's going to give me kind of an inky dark blue green blue gray color so the burnt umber and the blue just gives a lovely dark without putting black on my painting you can use black if black makes you happy use black now I'm just going to go and sort of draw where my little berry balls the little juicy balls are And I know it's really hard for you to see. It will pop up and be less, it will be easier to see as soon as I start getting the white or lighter purples in here. So I'm just going to very quickly, kind of like, not like bricks, kind of not like bricks. You've got some very, the, the little, 
the little sacks of juice. You've got some that are really, really big and some that are tiny and some that are sort of pushed in behind others. And just remember that however many you put in, you're going to have to highlight, which isn't hard because really we're moving quite quickly on this. I love blackberries. They grow wild around my house. I have to keep pulling blackberry vines out every year because the birds are really very prolific at planting those seeds. There we go. Get that really dark right at the top where it's going to be under the leaves at the top of the berry. Let's see. So I'm not going to wait for it to dry. I'm going to grab some of that mixed up purple that we did, the crimson and ultramarine blue and white. And I'm going to go in because if you look, there's these fun little sort of dusty highlights that happen on blackberries. I'm just going to put a few of those sort of blue gray dusty spots. See how we're already starting to get some shape and form. And if my my paint, if there's a little bit of the actual crimson that shows up in here, that's cool because real blackberries, if you look at here, if you look at this picture here, these berries are starting to change color. These have already changed. And you've got that deep crimsony red already. So I'm sort of looking at that, getting some ideas about my painting. You know, just because I did a study doesn't mean I have to stick exactly with the study. Ooh, looks like I brought a little bit more brighter highlight. I think I want to darken up just a bit. Now to keep this from looking like grapes, what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that everything stays very tightly packed together and touching. If you end up with any of these little balls hanging loose, they're going to look like grapes. We don't want that. At least not in this painting, but you'll know how to make grapes. All right, so I've got that. And I want to take some of that ultramarine blue and the crimson, mix those together. That makes a totally different gray blue, purpley color, a little bit of white into that. Can you see? There we go. And a bit more of the blue. Rolling it around. This is that number four cat's tongue. This is a brighter color. See, I'm not being precious. It's just drop some color on, smush your brush. You know, sometimes your brush makes perfect shapes. Sometimes not as much. Now, right now it looks very polka dotty, doesn't it? So I'm going to take some of the phthalo blue and the crimson. I didn't even wash out my brush. So there's going to be some little, little surprises that happen. But I'm kind of working underneath and around trying to make some of those transitions a little bit a little bit smoother. This painting is nice for somebody who is just starting out because it does give you some opportunity to work on overlapping things, but nobody's going to be able to tell you that you did your blackberry wrong, you know? And 
And now if you go and paint this and, and sell it, please do. Please sell your paintings. But don't take my painting and put it on a t-shirt uh, or on a mug or, or cards. Don't take my actual artwork. But you can take your painting that you do because I do not own the copyright on blackberries. You know, I mean, really, who does? Who does? So I'm going to take and sort of lightly. Now, if I had some zinc white or mixing white, this would be a really good time for that. What I'm doing is just very, very lightly kind of dry brushing some of this white in onto some of these spots. Let's see. And then I'm going to take a different little brush, probably the cat's tongue, and just sort of smoosh that color around. The cat's tongue is basically dry now. So I'm just using it to blend with. I could use the a stiff small brush, but this brush is working. And you see I'm getting that sort of dusty, blackberry dusty color. That's all we're doing. Just sort of dusting it up. All right. So now one more little, actually, I think I'm going to take just, since my brush is a little dirty, now I'm just taking a little bit of that purple that's on my brush up onto those leaves and the stem because I see that this stem needs to be separated a little bit from the, from the background. And you can take whatever color it, you know, your, I, I don't have to use green. I can use whatever color I want. A little bit of white, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Maybe a little bit of yellow, maybe a little bit of white. <laughs> it's whatever color. Look at that. We're just going to. Just give it a little bit more character. Take a tiny touch of that yellow. Did not wipe my brush out. I just wanted to get a little bit more liveliness in this. It was looking a little bit stiff. So let's, let's liven it up just a smidge, hey? Brighten that edge up even more. Ha, huh. see? And I'm taking that stem a bit more into that darker range, it looks like. So I'll just maybe get some of that yellow ochre in there as my sort of highlight down in that. We'll start putting some of this green in. And that green just sort of happened because I picked up green. <laughs> and didn't say anything, did I? Sorry. I hope you're enjoying this. Please click that like button, share the video with your friends, and make sure that you're checking out Acrylic April. I was doing that wandering around a little bit so that I could let the berry dry just a smidge. We're going to go ahead and make this much darker down inside there. I'm taking some of that burnt umber and the phthalo blue again. I think I'm going to put a little bit of ultramarine in it too. That just, it just does something to the colors. And now we're going to go underneath. 
dab dab I'm not going to try and actually underline or outline completely I'm more just trying to get some impressions of dark and light without doing the strong outlines. All right, and it's going to start popping here as soon as we go and put that gray blue just really sort of softly dust. See, just softly dust. I'm not, again, I'm not outlining. I'm just sort of dabbing to start bringing those little balls of sweet summer juice forward. See how that's Look at that. And you don't do it to every single spot. Because then we're going to go ahead and put much more bright. Move that out of the way. Much more bright. Not completely white yet, though. I'm just taking that dirty brush and I'm just grabbing white and I'm sort of mix, mix, mixing until I get more of a light color. There we go. On the top edges of some of these, not every one of them. Yeah. Some of the little balls of juice actually hang out farther forward. And so they catch just a little bit more light. Just want to put a tiny bit of that light along this edge. Not a lot. See how that's working out? It, it is just paint feels like magic. It really does. Now I'm going to actually take much more just white and just tiny little hint of that blue. We're just, we're just working the layers of those brighter colors. Again, the, the, the brighter and brighter this is getting, the smaller and smaller the amounts of white are that I'm putting on. There, that's all of that. And then we'll go in just, yeah, I need to rinse my brush out. I do want a couple spots, just a couple spots of bright, bright white. It needs to, there. Whoops, not that thick. The... Arteza Expert Paints are nice and pigmented. And very opaque. It's, it's quite nice. All right. I'm going to take my dry cat's tongue. Because I want to just ever so slightly touch down on that on that paint. I don't want to have big blops sticking up. And I'm sort of diffusing it just ever so slightly. And I'm taking my brush and I'm wiping it off the tip. There we go. Does it look like blackberries? There's still a little trick that we're going to do. I need my little brush. We're going to take some of the burnt umber and the yellow ochre, mix them together, 
and we're going to put some little bits of pops of brown right here. Because this is the area where the, um, the little flower bits tend to congregate. And then much more yellow ochre and a little bit of the lemon yellow even, I think. The lemon yellow brightens it up without, um, without adding white to it. So it's not making it pastel. And I'm using that number two Ruby Satin. And I'm going to go in and give it just some little touch, touch, touch. Little flicks. And coming off the fruit, there's these little hairs. They're actually like spots where the fruit was pollinated. I where the somehow the the way the berries grow, they get these little little hairy bits. I am not a horticulturalist, so I do not have all of the the details on how the blackberries grow, but you've got that center core and the berries all come off of it. And it's almost like this is where that, the center of the flower was, is where the berries grow. But do you see how putting those little hairs in actually helped to make it look more like a blackberry. Now there's some little soft little yellowy hairs on the stem and on the back of the leaf right here, because this is sort of the backside of this leaf. And I want to go ahead and put those little guys in and we're done. So just, let's see if I can do this with just tiny little tap taps. And that's also going to help look, make it look like the stem has some light coming from behind it now. Just like that. Very light hand barely putting like two, two little hairs of the, of the brush down on the canvas. Light, light hand. And then down this, this leaf, I'm going to put just a few little, few little hairs. Let's see, we're going to make that a little bit more solid on the spine. So those, those little hairs actually look like they're coming off of something. There we go. Brighten up that top edge. Brighten up those two little two little grassy bit or leafy bits, more highlight because I want more highlight. I want to bring this out just a little bit more. That's something with these paints though, is that they do tend to dry a little bit darker, but boy, don't they make a beautiful natural type composition. There we go. A little bit more of that green and maybe a little ultramarine in that. Now I could sit here and putz around for hours. I really, really could. But I think we are going to call this done. Make sure you click the like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and click that notification bell. Leave me a comment down below if you enjoyed this video and if you want to see more, let me know. I'm doing a painting every day this month. Check out my social media on Instagram and on Facebook. 
for the daily paintings and click those like buttons on the daily paintings that you want to see made into tutorials. If you are interested in purchasing any of my paintings from Acrylic April, they will be up on my website, on my shop. <laughs> just, just saying. Anyway, thank you guys so much. Remember to go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And I hope to see you back here again really soon. Bye-bye.